As we have seen from the Blender by the number statistics, Blender is growing rapidly whether it be the number of users or the rate at which new tools and features are being added. Today I'm going to discuss with you why I personally think this is the case and why I think it will continue to grow and become better compared to the other 3D software on the market today. Before we continue, I wanted to let you know about a very good motion graphics course. You will learn about procedural modeling and finding ways to be creative when creating nice structures. You will also learn about ambient animation, simulations, in addition to optimizing and fusing some things to create nice motion effects. In the shading section, the instructor will show you how to set up complex shaders that will allow you to have more control when doing different things with materials. In the rendering chapters, You'll be focusing on how to use EV properly in motion graphics, in addition to learning about volumetrics, particle lights, compositing, and so on. At the end, you will go through the creation process of complete projects with the instructor. Projects such as a tunnel loop, the cube wave background, the walking man, and the hologram landscape. If you are interested in this course, you can find the links in the description. First of all, because it is not driven by profit, but focused on innovation. As opposed to the other 3D software that are owned and developed by other big companies and corporations, Blender development is independent and can go in the direction that better serves artists, designers, architects, small studios, or anyone else who want to use it, whether they are hobbyists or professionals, or even companies by the way. This is the case because they are supporting its development through the Blender Development Fund. I personally think that the problem with the other major 3D software that are owned by big companies is that there are demands to be met other than the most beneficial thing and the most optimal outcome for artists and designers, which is most importantly making the software better, but for them it is making profit. This is the case especially if the company is publicly traded. They have shareholders, they have CEOs, managers, and they have a lot of employees to pay, in addition to taxes, utility bills, and tons of other expenses. In addition to that, their investors expect them to grow constantly after paying these expenses, which means they are under pressure. The problem is that this pressure sometimes can manifest when it comes to development, meaning since the software is doing what it is supposed to do generally speaking, one thing to maximize profit is to cut down expenses when it comes to development. As a result, they hire fewer developers or pay them less. I'm not saying that Autodesk, for example, is doing this, but we can assume it is because compared to Blender, the development is very slow. Another strategy is to increase prices of 3D software constantly, which I am sure of because we have seen a sudden increase in Max's and Maya's prices and other Autodesk products recently. Sometimes worse things happen like ignoring development and making users feel like they are making progress when the intent is actually to make profit in the first place, not serving the users who use the software. On the other hand, Blender is driven by true and genuine desire for development to meet the needs of artists, designers, and small studios who are making great video games, working on VFX projects, and working to make a living. In addition, of course, to millions of hobbyists and people who don't have a lot of experience. Another thing that makes me optimistic about the future of Blender is that it has a constantly growing development budget. As opposed to the development of other software such as Max, Maya Cinema 4D and other software, Blender development is funded independently by creators whether it be artists or studios or even corporations. The interesting thing is that the development fund is growing rapidly and more and more people and companies are joining the development fund which is fantastic. I think it doubled compared to last year and it is now in the range of $160,000 per month which is enough to employ 20 to 25 developers working full time. The other thing is, there is a pressure to improve and get features and tools implemented, especially when it comes to big companies and studios that contribute to the development fund because they need these features. The idea is, there is intrinsic and external incentives behind development. But when it comes to the other 3D software, I think there is an incentive from Autodesk, for example, to develop and keep the companies and studios using their software, but it is not as strong compared to Blender, for example. Another thing is that it has a larger base of independent developers. 
Blender is open source, that's why it attracts a lot of developers. The best part is everyone, no matter who you are, is able to develop their tools and add-ons, and these tools can be implemented without questions. In addition to that, you can use them, share them with the community, or even sell them. On the other hand, when we look, for example, at the developers of 3DS Max, Maya, and Cinema 4D, especially developers working with Autodesk, there are tons of regulations, conditions, and requirements to be met, and other stuff that make the development kind of hard and not as rewarding, of course. That's why we see a lot of developers who work with Autodesk software are now developing add-ons for Blender, which is a great thing, more power to them, and to Blender and other software, of course. Also, the fact that the major 3D software are paid, and they are subscription-based, meaning you have to keep paying every month and every year, like $1,700 per year for 3ds Max or Maya, for example. This means that paying for add-ons, plugins, and scripts, and other third-party stuff is kind of a burden, especially if you have a lot of bills to pay, and you are not doing as much, or you are not seeing much success as a 3D artist, designer, or architect. This makes the job of developers a bit harder, I would say. But on the flip side, since Blender is free, you can actually buy the add-ons and use them to see a lot of progress in your work or career, or even within your studio, or whatever you are doing without feeling the same burden, not even close. I mean financial burden. It's not gonna be weighing heavily on you because, to be honest, the most popular and needed add-ons are around the $20 to $60 range. For most people, this is not a lot of money compared to the work that the add-ons can do and the time that they can save you. Not to mention the efforts that the developers have been putting in for months and years to make it as best as possible and as efficient as possible for you. And overall, the ecosystem of Blender attracts a lot of third-party developers. Especially in Blender, third-party development is extremely advanced and these developers can help you get a lot of things done cheaply instead of paying thousands of dollars when it comes to the other 3D software. Add-on developers of Blender are very talented. With their contribution to third-party section of Blender, they are doing a huge service to the community and they are making the software even better faster. Even though add-ons are not a direct part of Blender, I believe they are part of it indirectly. But sometimes, some good and brilliant add-ons get integrated with the software so you can use them directly within Blender. Another funny thing is, Autodesk is kind of admitting that Blender is kind of a threat to their software mainly 3ds Max and Maya, because since the boom of Blender started in 2019, Autodesk has been putting in kind of more efforts into development, even though many consider it to be late, but it is way better than doing nothing. Still, the rate at which Blender is being developed is far greater, and the tools and features are way more appealing to creators, small studios, or even companies that are supporting the development fund. It may take five years or even a decade until we start seeing Blender being used as a major software in the VFX, gaming, or the animation industry. Actually, it's not a matter of whether or not it's going to, it's just a matter of timing. And I think that it started already, and it is becoming better and better every year, since companies or studios are adopting it and they are allowing their artists to use it as a choice if they want to. But make no mistake, if a big studio adopts Blender, it's not because it is free, but because it is a good competitor to the other 3D software and the tools they are using currently, and because Blender does a great job. This is the case because the budget they spend on software is not as big compared to their other expenses. I hope you found these insights useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.